Hi, I'm Chris Maley Rosario, the chef for Vegan Sabor Latino, based in Denver, Colorado. I like to take dishes that are well known throughout different cultures and places, take that recipe and make it vegan. So welcome to Vegan La Vida Loca, where today I'll be showing you how to make a Puerto Rican style appetizer called mofongo, as well as a viral feta pasta that was on social media last year. I decided to take the recipe, tweak it, and veganize it and create a delicious pasta. We're gonna finish off with a corn custard called majarete, which is an original Dominican dessert. So stick around while I show you how to make these easy and delicious recipes. Alrighty, for this next dish, we're cooking a vegan feta pasta. This specific recipe came about from a viral feta pasta video that I watched on social media. Decided to veganize it, tweak the recipe a little bit, and make it my own. So we're starting with a box of bow tie pasta, which we're going to boil over medium heat for about 15 minutes. To the water before we get started, I will be adding just a little bit of oil. This is so my pasta does not stick, as well as a little bit of salt. I'm gonna do about half a teaspoon. Ready, and then we'll take our bow tie pasta, add it to the water, and then while that is boiling, we are going to work on the sauce. The sauce itself is actually quite easy. It all goes in the oven together. We're gonna use a baking dish. And in the middle of the baking dish, we are going to add our feta cheese, which this vegan feta right here. I'm gonna just add it to the middle of the dish, as well as my cherry tomatoes. This is one box of cherry tomatoes. Next, I'll be adding some chopped onions, just roughly chopped, really nothing exciting. I would say that's about maybe like two tablespoons. And then as far as the garlic goes, we're gonna chop two garlic cloves. These are actually pretty large. I'll usually use about three to four if they're smaller. But with this size, I'm going to do just two. So we'll just kind of roughly chop these and add them to the um, to the pan right here. Next, I'll be adding the peppers, which is about half of a yellow pepper, a red pepper, and an orange pepper. I have also used green pepper, which is also delicious. Some mushrooms. These right here are just chopped white mushrooms, but any mushrooms give it a delicious taste. I will also be adding some spinach. And next we're going to add our seasonings. For seasonings, I will definitely encourage some red pepper flakes just to add some heat. If you don't like spicy, just omit this stuff. Next, I will be adding both garlic powder and onion powder, which are a huge staple to this dish. A little mix that I like to do is a sazon seasoning powder and adobo seasoning powder, which you can really find anywhere at your local grocery stores. And these are just delicious with any given dish. And this combination with this pasta just takes it to the next level. Lastly, I will be adding just some oil to the top of the vegetables. Before we pop this in the oven, we're actually gonna add about half a cup of oat milk. You can also substitute for any dairy-free milk that you like. I feel like oat milk, it's just a little bit on the creamier side, so it gives it that really creamy texture. And 
now we're ready for the oven. Alrighty, so while we have our pasta boiling in our sauce in the oven, we're gonna saute our vegan sausage. First, in a pan over medium heat, we will add some cooking oil. Next, I'm gonna saute just some white chopped onions. I'm gonna do about, it, just about a tablespoon. And I've also got some garlic here, some garlic cloves. I'm just gonna chop those up a little. We're gonna saute that as well. We'll saute those for a few minutes. We'll let them get nice and fragrant before we add our sausage. Okay, now that our onion and garlic are nice and fragrant, we're gonna add the vegan sausage and saute it for about two to three minutes, just until it's a little golden brown. Alrighty, so now that we've got our sausages nice and brown we are going to take them out of the pan onto a serving dish so that we can add it to the pasta later next i'm going to drain the pasta from the water and we'll be back Alrighty. Now I have a Puerto Rican style dish that is also very well known in the Dominican Republic where I'm from originally, which is called mofongo. Mofongo is a fried plantain mash that is normally stuffed with meat or topped with meat. However, by making it vegan, what I'm doing is I'm using just vegetables, which here I have red pepper, yellow pepper, and orange pepper. I also like to add mushroom from time to time, but this time we're gonna omit the mushroom and we're actually gonna add some vegan cheese. Within that vegan cheese, we'll also add a little bit of oat milk to give it a little bit of a creamy, cheesy texture that we're gonna top it off with. Next, I'm gonna be cutting the platanos, which cutting platanos is an art. <laughs> In my family they would say if you don't know how to cut a platano you're not ready to, for marriage just yet but I think I am at this point. First we're just gonna start by cutting off the ends. Yep. Just like so. Then with a knife we're gonna go just into the actual platano peel and move our knife down with some pressure on your finger. I'm gonna make a few slits on the actual platano because this makes it a lot easier to actually peel. After that, I'm just gonna take my knife, go right underneath that slit that I make, and I'm just gonna start lifting up that peel as best as I can. Sometimes if the platanos are really green, they stick to the actual platano, so it can make it a little difficult, but it's the easiest thing to peel. Of course, this one's gonna be the hardest one to peel. <laughs> but, you know, after so many years of cooking with platano, I think at this point I have it down. And oftentimes I'll use my fingers to just kind of lift some of that peel as well. Sometimes if you have a really sharp knife, it doesn't get in there as great. So just use your hands. Just make sure your hands are washed and clean. And then afterwards, we are going to cut the platanos into about half inch pieces. This specific recipe was taught to me by my grandmother. I was born and raised in the Dominican Republic and in the Dominican Republic, plantain is actually a base for a lot of dishes. Plantain is actually one of the most used uh, root vegetables that we have and there's a lot of ways that you can use it. Very, very diverse. I will also be chopping up some of the red peppers and cutting up some garlic to saute with those. Alrighty, this time I am using two platanos. Two platanos would be a good serving for about one or two people. This appetizer right here, it's a little more on the heavy side just because plantain's actually very filling. So now that we've got our platanos peeled, we're gonna go ahead and chop those into about 
just like a half inch, half inch to an inch pieces. Alrighty. And after I cut these up, we're going to finish cutting our peppers so that we can start frying and sauteing. For this appetizer, we are going to fry our chopped plantains over medium heat in cooking oil. And we're gonna fry those on each side for about two to three minutes. What you want is a nice golden color to the actual plantain. And while those are frying, we are going to start sauteing some of our chopped peppers that we already had chopped before. To the pan, I will add just some cooking oil. And I have this over medium heat. I'm gonna add some white chopped onions. About a tablespoon. And I'm also going to, instead of chopping the garlic, I'm actually just going to smash it. So that's what I usually do. So I'll just grab my knife, use a garlic clove, and just smash into it. Just smashes the garlic in a way that it releases a flavor completely different than when it's chopped. At least I would like to think so. And then we're gonna let the onion get a little translucent. So just a few minutes of saute before we add our peppers. And while those are cooking, we are going to look at our platano which looks like it's a little yellow on the bottom. So now I'm gonna flip it to the other side so that the other side can also cook nice and well. Cutting them smaller actually helps a little bit better with the frying because it cooks through a lot easier than a thicker piece of plantain. Alrighty, now that we've got those flipped on our pan, we're gonna let them sit for another two to three minutes. And while that's going, we're getting ready to saute our peppers. Before I do that, I almost forgot. Sofrito. Sofrito is a vegetable base. This specific sofrito has been in my family for generations, from my mom to her mom to her mom and back many generations. This vegetable base right here really takes each dish and enhances it to the max. Rice, beans, it's really versatile in what you can use it for. And I'm gonna use about half a tablespoon just to really enhance the flavor of the peppers. I'm just gonna saute it for another few minutes. Once it's nice and fragrant, then I'll add in my peppers. Now, onto the peppers. We'll let the peppers saute, get nice and softened. Sometimes I like to let them cook a little bit extra just so that that flavor is really in there. And while the peppers are making, I'm gonna check back up on my platano. I want to make sure that I'm not burning them and that they're not overly cooked. It is easier to mash them in our pilon, which we'll be using to make the mofongo once they're nice and soft. If you let them in the oil for a little too long, it can be a little hard to mash and also it can be a little dry. So I would definitely always recommend to just keep checking on them. We're gonna let those saute for another few minutes. Looks like they're not ready just yet. And then we'll be back. So now that we've got our peppers nice and brown, I'm gonna proceed by adding the oat milk and the cheese so they can melt simultaneously and make a little bit of a cheese sauce. Alrighty, I'm just gonna mix that around a bit and I'm gonna let that cheese melt. This vegan cheese specifically does have a good uh, melting profile. A lot of vegan cheeses often don't, uh, but this one is actually one of my favorites. So we're gonna let that simmer on just a low heat. I'm gonna lower my heat down and while that's melting we are going to mash our plantains in our pilon this specific uh, pilon you can find in a lot of different places however if you don't 
you can put them in a bowl with a cup and just mash them that way. The star of mofongo is actually the garlic. We're gonna make a little oil and garlic. And my secret recipe is actually adding a little bit of butter, which gives it a really nice creamy texture to the actual mofongo so that it's not dry. So we're gonna take the platanos out of the fire. I'm just gonna put them on a dish here. So before we add them to our pilon, we are going to add our garlic clove. I'm only using one, it's a medium size, and just maybe half a tablespoon of oil, which oftentimes you can do olive oil or cooking oil. And then we're just gonna mash away. This is gonna give it a really good garlicky taste. I will also be adding just about a pinch of salt. This is mainly to taste. Oftentimes, I'll adjust the salt afterwards, after I mash the garlic. I try it and just make sure that it's not too salty, and if it needs salt, then we can add it in there. So now I've got this pasty, oily mixture in here, which is ready for my platanos. Now, we will add just about as much as you like in there. We'll do it in about five pieces and just mashing it in there. And then as I mash it, then I'll add the rest of the platanos. And I'll also incorporate the butter once it's nice and mashed so that it actually can get all incorporated together. All right, so I've got nice mash, so I'm gonna just keep adding my platano and keep mashing it down. You will see it kind of come up on the sides as you mash it, and that's exactly what we want. Now that I've added about half of the platanos that I have here that are fried, I'm gonna add in my secret recipe. And it's really just adding butter. <laughs> so right here I have a vegan butter, which I'm really just adding about, this would be like two teaspoons. Just takes it to the next level. And as I mash that, get that mixed in there, then I'm gonna continue to add the rest of the platanos that I have. We want to create a nice, mushy mixture of the platano. So as we mash, we're going to continue adding in the rest of the platano. If it's coming up on the sides, you can also just use your nicely washed hands around the pilon to push it down, or even the actual pilon to push it in there. Alrighty, so now we've got our mofongo mashed. I've put it in a bowl so that when I plate it, it actually has a nice round appearance to it. So we're gonna just awesome, just like that. And then we're gonna check up on our veggies, which at this point the cheese has melted, it's nice and cheesy. Something I forgot to add was actually seasonings. So I am using a little mix of sazon and adobo together, just about a pinch. It really just enhances the flavor a little bit more. And then I'll also add a little bit of onion and garlic powder, just about a pinch as well. And lastly, I will add in just about a pinch of salt and then I'll adjust it if I feel like it needs to be more salty, but we'll do two pinches. What? Now we're just going to move that around. And as you can see here, we have a really nice cheesy texture to our peppers, which we'll just be topping off in the fungal with. Mmm, look at all that. And there we have it. It's our vegan Puerto Rican style mofongo. Now that we have our veggies out of the oven, I actually did adjust the time. I went ahead and left it in the oven for about 20 minutes at 375. Now I'm going to add this to the blender. We're going to blend this to make the sauce. I'm also going to add in just a little bit of water to make it a little runnier. It really just depends the texture that you like. If you like it thicker, do not use any more water. 
If you like a runnier, then use a little bit more. So let's go ahead and add this to our blender. Awesome. Make sure we get all of those delicious juices in there. Alrighty. And I'm just gonna add a little tiny bit of water because I want to make it a little more runny. And we'll be back after we blend. Now that we've got our pasta sauce nice and blended, we're going to combine it with our bow tie pasta. So let's bring this here. Then I'll pour it in and then I'll mix it as I go. I don't know about you, but I like my pasta really saucy. So I add a lot. I'm gonna actually just add the rest of it. I'm gonna leave a little bit behind so that I can mix this a little bit better. And then afterwards, we will be adding the rest. And then we'll add just the rest of our pasta sauce. Awesome, so now it's looking nice and saucy, just how I like it. So, we will add this to a plate. Next, I'm going to be adding that sausage that we had sauteed earlier. I'm going to also add just a little bit of red pepper flakes to give it that extra, extra kick. And the star of the show here is fresh basil. So I'm going to grab just a few little pieces. And you can either cut it with some onions, cut it with your hands, whatever you prefer. We'll top it off with some fresh basil. And there you have it. It's that viral vegan feta pasta. <music> Lastly, we have a Dominican style dessert called majarete. Majarete is a corn and coconut custard. Right here I have two corn on the cobs. You can also use canned corn, but I find that using fresh corn just really gives it a better flavor profile. So to a blender, we're gonna add our corn. Next, we are adding about half a cup of oat milk. And a full can of coconut milk. Lastly, we are going to just put this in the blender and then once we have it on the pan, we'll add in our sugar and all our other spices. Now that we've got our corn and coconut milk blended, we are going to add it to a pan over medium heat. Awesome. Now, the next step is we're gonna make a slurry with cornstarch. So here I've got about three tablespoons of cornstarch and about half a cup of warm water. I'm not gonna use the whole slurry. I just want it to thicken a little bit more than it normally does. So. We're gonna give that a good whisk. We also have about two thirds of a cup of white sugar and about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So now that we've got our slurry, I'm going to be adding it slowly to our mixture that's already on the pan. Next, we're gonna add in our sugar. And next, we'll be adding in our vanilla extract. Ready. While that's simmering, we'll do just a little pinch of salt, about half a teaspoon of nutmeg powder, and we'll mix that in there as well. 
I am also going to use one full cinnamon stick while it boils. We're gonna let that simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes and we'll be back. Now that we have our corn and coconut milk nice and thick, we're gonna remove it from the pan and we're gonna put it in a plate. A personal preference is to let this cool down. Sometimes I'll put it in a mold and let it sit overnight, which makes it almost like a jello-like type of custard, but whatever you prefer. You can eat it warm, you can eat it cold. Now, to finish off, the start of the show is gonna be the ground cinnamon that it gets topped off with. It really takes that flavor profile of the corn, the coconut, and ties it all in. So just add cinnamon to your liking. And there you have it, Dominican style majarete. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more, feel free to follow me on Instagram at Vegan Sabor Latino. The S in Sabor is actually a number five. So Vegan Sabor Latino on Instagram. And stick around, where next I'll show you how to make a Dominican style vegetable soup called Sancocho. Thanks for watching.